Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Automotive. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode of whatever it is I'm working on today. Anyway, today we're here at the shop taking a look at this 2008. This is a Ford E150 van. It's got the V8 engine. I'm not exactly sure what size it's either, the 4.6 or the 5.4. I haven't looked at it yet. Anyway, the customer complaint is that the ABS light is illuminated. Now the shop has already scanned it and they found that there was a code stored. I'm not exactly sure what the code is off the top of my head. Anyway, due to the nature of the code, they were pretty certain that it was gonna need a new module. So the shop actually ordered a used unit. However, they wanted us to double check it before we actually replaced it. And so that's the goal today. You guys already know how we do it. Let's get started. So we'll start by hopping inside the truck. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and start this thing up. If you guys pay attention to the instrument panel, Right over here, we have the ABS light illuminated. As you guys can see, that's pretty much the only light that we have other than the tire pressure light over there. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect the scan tool. We'll see what code we got. All right, so today I'm gonna be using this brand new scan tool that the guys over at X-Tool sent me. This here is the brand new X-Tool D9. We're gonna go ahead and grab the box and plug it in. We'll plug this into the data link connector. Take a look at the device. Once it powers up, you can see that it gives us some information here. It gives us battery voltage, tells us whether or not we have Bluetooth connection. Here we have the scan tool. It's got a pretty cool interface. We're gonna click on auto scan. Let's click on Ford USA, it's showing us the vehicle information. We'll click OK. Then we'll go ahead and do an automatic scan. What that's going to do is it's going to scan all of the modules on the vehicle. And if you guys look here, we have this really cool topology. This is pretty much a layout of all of the modules on the vehicle. And if you take a look here, the ones in green are the ones that do not have codes. And the ones in red are the ones that do have codes. So according to the topology here, we have two codes in the VSM. We have one code in the ABS. So let's go into our ABS module. And here in the ABS module, you can see we have a lot of functions. First of all, we're gonna go ahead and read trouble codes. And there's our trouble code, guys, a C1096 open circuit of pump motor. Now, the cool thing about this menu is if you want some more information on that C1096, you can click on this little search button here. And as long as the tablet is connected to the internet, which in my case, mine is not connected to the internet because I'm out here in the field and I don't have Wi-Fi out here. I could hotspot for my phone, but we're gonna be moving over to my computer in a few moments so that we can pull up all data. So I'll just back out of here. Now, according to the basic description they give us here, it seems like we have an open in the pump motor itself for the ABS unit. So I wonder if we can try an actuation test that will let us bi-directionally turn on the ABS pump. So if you look here in the menu, there is actuation test. We'll go in here. And here we have a list of the different actuation tests. I think the one we're looking for is pump motor control of ABS. So we'll click on that. All right, so I'm gonna click on activate. And you can see it switched from inactive to active. Let's listen to see if the pump comes on. I don't hear anything. Let me go ahead and pop the hood. All right, guys, so moving under the hood, take a look here. You can see that on our scan tool, we are showing that we are active on our bi-directional control. And if we come down here, this is where the ABS pump is located. It's not making any noise at all. Whenever you activate the ABS pump bi-directionally, it should be pretty obvious when it comes on because normally these things are pretty loud. One other thing I wanna show you guys is how much of a hard fault this code is. Now here on the scan tool, if I clear the trouble code, if you take a look here, you can see it says codes have successfully been erased. We'll hit okay. Then we'll go back into the read trouble code menu and see if our code is still there. Check it out guys, our code is still there. So no matter how many times I try to clear this code, it comes right back. So this is definitely a hard fault. Another quick thing I wanna show you guys is that we can actually pull up live data here. You can see that we have full communication and we're able to read all of the data pits here. So whatever the problem is here, it's not a communication problem. Our problem is specific to the pump motor itself. Now let's take a look at the wiring diagram so we can figure out how to test it. All right, guys, so here we have all data pulled up on the computer. And what we're looking at is the code description for our C1096. Now, in this particular case, this page shows both C1095 and C1096. But we're just going to focus on the one that we have, which is a 1096. And so we're going to start by reading our normal operation. If you read here, it says that the fused battery voltage for the pump motor operation is supplied to the ABS module by the battery junction box fuse number 11, which is a 40 amp fuse. Then it also tells us here that the ground is provided to the ABS module on circuit 530, which is a light green and yellow wire. So that's gonna be our main power and our main ground for the ABS pump motor. Now, if we move down here, you can see that we have a description for our DTC C1096, and it tells us if a short to voltage, a short to ground, or an open is detected, if a locked up pump motor is detected, or there is an internal failure to the ABS module, DTC 1096 will be set. Now, if we scroll down, here you can see that they do give us some pinpoint testing i've already looked over these and they're pretty basic for example let me show you this one here at the top they want us to check the abs pump motor it says key in the on position 
Is the ABS pump motor running all the time? If the answer is yes, then they want you to install a new ABS module and hydraulic control unit. If not, they want you to continue to the next step. Now on the next step, they want you to check the ABS pump motor output by using the scan tool, which is something we already did. And if you look here, they're asking, does the ABS pump motor run for approximately two seconds? If yes, they want you to move on to the next step. If no, they want you to install a new ABS module and configure it using the programmable module installation. Again, guys, very basic testing. Some of this stuff we already did. Now, if we scroll down here, you can see that they do give us some instructions on how to check our power and ground. That's exactly what we're gonna do. Now, let me take you guys over to the wiring diagram. All right, guys, so here we have the wiring diagram for our ABS module. Very basic setup. If you take a look at this big square right here, this is going to be our ABS module. If you look up here at the top, you can see that these two big 40 amp fuses feed power into the module for the pump motor. And if you look down here at the bottom, you can see that these two green wires are going to be our grounds. Now we do also have one more power here on pin number 30, which actually comes from a 10 amp fuse in the central junction box. But if you notice, it says up here that it's only hot in start or run. So this is going to be an ignition power source for the ABS module. Module. Usually low current powers like this are used to wake up the module. The ones I'm really going to be focused on are going to be these main powers that come in from these 40 amp fuses on pins number 1 and 25 and these two main grounds on pins number 38 and number 13. These are going to be powers and grounds at all times. Now before we continue, there is something I would like to point out about this ABS module and pump assembly. If you look up here on the screen, I have a picture of what this ABS assembly looks like. Now essentially this assembly is made up of three pieces. Over here to the right, this plastic part that has the connector on it, that's going to be the module itself. We could also call this the computer for the ABS. Then over here to the left of the screen, this round cylindrical portion, that's going to be the pump motor itself. Then here in the middle sandwich between the two, we have the valve block assembly. This is where our brake lines connect. Now the interesting thing about this design here is that all of our electrical connections between the pump itself and the ABS module are internal to the unit. That means that we really don't have access to test the electrical connection between the module and the pump itself. Now on some other vehicles you might see a different design in which there's actually two big wires coming from the module itself going to the pump motor. Let me show you an example. Now if you take a look at this particular pump module assembly, this one I believe is out of a Nissan, you'll notice that we pretty much have kind of the same configuration here. But what you'll notice that's different about this assembly is that we actually have a separate connector with an external wiring harness for the power and ground that feeds our pump motor. Having a design like this makes it really easy for us to determine whether or not our problem is in the module or in the pump motor itself. That's something we can't do with this Ford design. All we can really do is check our main powers and grounds, see if they're present, and if they are, it's probably best to just replace the whole unit. So now that we know where our main powers and grounds are, let's move back over to the vehicle and check them. All right, guys, so moving back under the hood, I've already got the ABS module disconnected and we're ready for testing. If you look over here, you can see that I uh, just went ahead and unbolted the power steering reservoir and I tied it up and moved it up out of the way. And if you look down here, this is where the connector for the ABS module is. Like I said, I already disconnected it. Let me zoom in here. Okay, so starting off on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see the two big terminals. Those are pins number 13 and 38 our two main grounds. And if you look over here on the left-hand side of the screen, the two big terminals all the way at the end are pins number one and 25, our two main powers. Okay, so I've got my test light attached to the battery positive. That means that whenever we touch a ground, our test light is going to light. So let's go ahead and move over here and check our grounds. So I'm gonna start by checking pin number 13. And you guys can see we have a good ground there. The test light lights up nice and brightly. Then we'll go ahead and check pin number 38. And once again, we have a good ground. Now we're gonna switch our test light lead from the positive to the negative battery terminal. And now when we touch the battery positive, this test light should light. Looking good. Let's go ahead and check our powers. So we'll start with pin number one. Our test light lights up nice and brightly. So we got a good power there. Then pin number 25. And once again, our test light is lit up nice and bright. So we got good power there. All right guys, so at this point, it's pretty obvious that our problem is either something internal to the ABS module where it connects to the pump itself, or the pump itself is just bad. Again, there's not really an easy way to differentiate between the two, but luckily the shop did buy a complete unit. All right, so here we have the replacement unit. Again, this is a salvage yard unit. They did buy it used. Now I did double check the part numbers and they do seem to match pretty closely. Because this is an earlier model Ford, we should be able to program this module by using the PMI function in the scan tool. So let's go ahead and start removing the other unit. All right guys, so something I just thought of 
before actually installing this module, I wanted to make sure that it actually worked, that the pump was actually working. And so what I went ahead and did was I just plugged in the connector to our used module over here. And over here, I've got the scan tool. And again, we're back on our active test. Sorry about the glare, but I'm gonna go ahead and activate the pump and we're gonna listen and see if this pump actually comes on. So I'm gonna go ahead and click it. Yeah, so this pump is actually working. That's good enough for me. Let's go ahead and install this thing. All right, so we're gonna start by removing the brake lines. And what I'm using is this 13 millimeter crow's foot on this 3 8 drive extension. We'll just lower this down in there. Just slip this over the brake line and onto the nut like so, and we'll break it loose. <clears throat> There we go. Do the rest of them. <clears throat> the next one. Ah. Sorry for the grunting, but I keep hitting my hand on this coolant tank. This is a very tight spot. Let's get it loosened up as much as we can. We should be able to do the rest by hand. Break it loose. Ow. Finally, the last one. Break it loose. There we go. And we should be able to remove the rest by hand. Of course, you should probably be wearing gloves when you do this. There's one line. The other line. Oh, my hand's cramping. Okay, almost there. There we go. Two more left. back there need a little more persuasion got a little miniature wrench here oh, the smell of brake fluid always reminds me of my adolescence my teenage years i think because when i was a teenager working at my father-in-law shop he used to always have me doing all the brake work always bleeding brakes doing all the grunt work Finally, the last one over here. Come on. It's a fly that keeps landing on me, bugging the crap out of me. the last one all right so i've got all the brake lines disconnected i also went ahead and i removed the two lines from the master cylinder that way we had plenty of clearance now we'll just come down here to the driver's side and if we look in the fender well you can see that we've got three nuts down here that hold our bracket on so there's one up here and then two down here i'm just going to break these loose all right so i've got all three nuts removed let's go ahead and start pulling this unit out All right, so I've got the old one here next to our replacement unit. Let's go ahead and put this thing in. All right, guys, so fast forward. I've got the new module installed, or should I say the used one? Anyway, up here, I've got the original module plugged in because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the PMI, which is the programmable module installation. Now, unfortunately, I did try to find this function in the new scan tool that they sent me. However, after searching through the entire menu in the scan tool, I could not find the function for the PMI. Even under special functions, if we scroll down here, I go to ECU configurations, Ford USA, automatic detection. You can see we've got an option for programmable parameter, so I'm gonna click on that. But if we look at the menu, there's nothing in here for the programmable module installation. Even when I go back into auto scan, we've got our vehicle here. We'll go under service, chassis, braking. The only thing we have is service bleed brake, which is something we are going to use and then this IVD, which is something we're also going to need to do. However, we don't have the PMI. I'm gonna back out of this menu. We'll go straight into system selection, anti-lock braking system, ABS, and we'll go into special functions. And once again, all we have is service brake bleed and the initialization for the IVD. So I'm not really sure if it's a problem with the scan tool, the software, or maybe I just have no idea what I'm doing because this is a brand new scan tool and I still have to get used to it. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and connect my trusty launch. Here we have it. You can see programmable module installation. So we're gonna click on that. If you read it here, it says, please select yes 
if the available original ABS unit is installed in the vehicle. Right now we have the original one plugged in, so we're gonna hit yes. Once again, it says ensure that the module currently installed in the car is the old one that needs to be replaced. It is, so I'm gonna hit okay. Set the ignition switch to on. It's already on, we'll hit okay. It says switch it to off. So we'll switch it to off, hit okay. It says install new module into the vehicle. So let's move back under the hood and plug in the new module. All right, so I've got the new module plugged in. Back inside the truck, we'll hit okay. It says turn the key on. Key is on, we'll hit okay. And it says procedure succeeded. So there we have it. We completed the PMI using the Launch X431 Pro Mini. Now we'll go ahead and do the IVD initialization sequence, which is pretty easy to do. It says make sure we're parked on the level surface. Do not shake or bounce the vehicle and do not depress the brake pedal. Hit yes to continue. It says start engine. Start this thing up. We'll hit okay. Set ignition switch to off. We'll turn it off. Hit okay. And we are done. We can back out of the menu here. We'll go to read fault code and see if any codes are stored. As you guys can see, there is no DTC stored in the ABS module. So that's definitely a fix. The only thing left to do is for us to bleed the brakes. Now, I do need some help for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask the mechanic over here if he can help me bleed these brakes. I am going to be utilizing that function for service brake bleed in the scan tool so that we can activate the ABS pump to make sure that we get all of the air out of the system. Anyways, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you were able to learn something from it. Now, I do wanna take a moment to say thank you guys for helping us hit 100,000 subscribers. That's a huge milestone for us. I never thought we would get this far, but here we are today and it's all because of you guys. So I just wanted to say thank you for everyone who follows the channel, who shares the videos, everyone who likes and comments. Thank you guys for continuing to support us and I promise to keep bringing you guys videos like this. Now, as far as the Xtool D9 scan tool, I haven't used it enough really to be able to recommend it to you guys. It did kind of bum me out that I wasn't able to do the PMI on the Ford van, but who knows, maybe in the future that might be added with an update. I haven't given up on this Xtool yet. I'm still going to continue to try it out. So you'll definitely see this one in future videos of mine. So if you guys are interested in the Xtool D9, I will leave a link in the description where you guys can go check it out. I'll also leave a link in the description for the launch. Both of these scan tools are great options. So if you're in the market for one, I would definitely check these out. Anyways, guys, like I always say, thank you for watching the video. I hope you found it useful, informational, educational, entertaining. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.